Welcome to today's Shaman Short. Great tips, inspiration, and ways to live a more authentic and shamanic life. Join Dakota Walker from Gaia Wisdom School as she treks across the globe, bringing you these bite-sized pieces of wisdom for you to deepen your path back home to your soul. And now, from somewhere in the world, here's Dakota. Hey guys, it's Dakota. So I am here in Colorado. I, uh, just, I just got here actually not long ago. So I'm close to the Utah border still. And uh, for a while now, I have been going through the southern uh, southwest and it, uh, I, I go through just fields and fields and fields of sage from Utah, New Mexico, uh, Texas, Arizona, and now in southern Colorado also. And I would be amiss if I did not stop and do a shaman short on uh, sage and how valuable of a spiritual tool sage is. And uh, this will probably be uh, close to the last patch that I go through for a while because I'm getting ready to head up the mountain into the higher elevations. I'm, I'm hot, so I'm leaving and going up north. But um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some of my, my last bit of sage. Uh, I've been collecting it from each state and sent some to some friends and uh, used some for myself and have some in my, my medicine bag and my altar. But um, so I want to talk a little bit about sage. Everybody uh, who kind of is in that spiritual realm knows that sage is a great uh, smudger. And smudging is the act of burning sage and then the smoke you use to smudge or cleanse or clear uh, energy from either yourself or from uh, a space. And you know, a lot of times it's used for purification and things like that. And one of the uh, things that I love about sage, uh, aside from the aroma, is that it is really kind of a versatile, um, it is a versatile herb or uh, say, uh, what am I thinking of, uh, sacred herb. It's actually one of the four sacred herbs used in most traditions of uh, Native Americans. So you've got sage, cedar, uh, tobacco, and um, uh, sweetgrass is another one. And so you have certain herbs or <clears throat> tribes used to see certain herbs as having different medicinal qualities and they would be used in ceremony. They'd also be used uh, in per direction. So sage is, in my medicine wheel, sage would sit in the south direction. And um, I'm just like intoxicated by the smell of, I'm. you can't see it, well you can, you can see behind me, but there's just sage everywhere. It's just, uh, and each state, what I'm finding, has a very different smell. Uh, my least favorite is Arizona, but I love New Mexico. It has just the, the most aromatic sage that I've found so far. This is a pretty close second though. And yeah, and uh, in Utah, they have what's called sand sage. And it's uh, very, uh, it's a lot lighter, uh, the texture, and but still so aromatic and, and very, very uh, uh, much sweeter than, than this. This is a little bit more earthy smelling. And so most often what you're probably remembering is that you buy sage and sage bundles, and then you would burn the end, blow it out, and then, you know, waft it around. And I actually like to buy sage uh, in, in loose leaf and burn it in a shell or a bowl. And, um, and so what I usually do when I cleanse a space is I'll use all of the sacred herbs to cleanse it, but I will uh, most often start out with uh, sage and go clockwise in a room or in a house. So if I'm walking in the front door, I'm going to go clockwise and then I'll go to the first room and I'll go clockwise around that room and then I'll go clockwise around the next room, clockwise around the next one, until I come back around to the front door. And you want to, when you're using sage in the context of what I'm talking about and cleansing the space, you want to really kind of blow the uh, smoke up into the corners and air vents, etc. And you also want to open up your windows so that the smoke can take out the uh, negative energies out of your space. 
Uh, and when I'm working with people, I usually will start at the, um, well, it depends. I'll start sometimes at the crown chakra and work my way down to the root chakra, or I'll do vice versa. But I go in the context of the chakras and use it to cleanse each chakra. And, uh, and then just by default, like what I'll do is I'll keep some sage in my car, I'll keep it on my altar, I'll keep it in my room, and it's just kind of like just the very essence of it being there is a great cleanser and purifier. I also love to cook with sage, and I also like to drink um, tea with some sage in it. So, you know, always make sure that you're checking to make sure that the sage that you're using can be used for those uh, reasons. Uh, you don't want to get sick or anything. I don't know that sage comes in a plant that would make you sick, but you don't want to take that risk. So what I get asked also is how do I harvest my own sage? And first of all, I want to, this, this is kind of a blanket statement for anything that you would be harvesting out in the wild is that you want to do it ethically and with a conscious um, intention. So I wouldn't just, you know, grab this and chop it down and take it in my truck. I'm not going to do that. What I will do is I will actually connect with the plant first and internally I will ask, um, may I uh, utilize you and will you be um, willing to come with me? And I will get either a yes or a no. You'll feel it intuitively whether the plant is willing to be a part of your uh, ceremony, ritual, or use that you have for it. But have an intended use for the sage. So um, I actually am going to collect some today because I really would love to uh, do my, my 50th birthday is coming up and I want to have some sage that I can use to kind of clear out anything um, of my 49 years that is no longer serving me so that when I cross that threshold of being 50 that I can go into that that with a clean um, a clean energy field. So I'm going to collect some sage today. So I have already asked if I can collect from this plant and it said yes. And so what I will do is I will just kind of look at the plant overall. You know, is it healthy? First of all, if it, if it seems like a plant that is not healthy, that's really striving, and there's a few around here that you can tell the drought has taken its toll on it, and it's only got like maybe, you know, a couple of handfuls of uh, healthy leaves, I'm not going to collect from that plant because it needs everything it has in order to, um, to survive. So I'm only going to collect from a healthy plant that seems to be thriving. And once I, um, I, I choose a plant, then I'm going to choose where that plant will allow me to cut. And that comes either energetically, but it also comes just by uh, kind of common sense. I'm not going to you know, chop off up here, but I might take, you know, and I'm not going to take a hardy, um, a hardy stem. I'm not going to cut right here at this, this big stem that's taking years to develop. I'm going to take something that's a little less um, invasive, and that will be enough for me. So once I determine all of that, I will, um, I will cut the, the plant, make a clean cut, and I will give gratitude. And the gratitude is, is really super important. Uh, I like to leave tobacco or cornmeal as a gratitude to the earth and to the plant itself. If I don't have those available to me, then I will use my spit and leave a little bit of my DNA here as a token of my gratitude. Leaving a piece of my, I'm taking a piece of it, I'm going to leave a piece of me. So these are just some of the things that you can do, whether you're harvesting sage or any kind of plant, cedar, juniper, any of it. In fact, I see some juniper over here, and um, well, actually might be a cedar tree. It's really cool in the southwest. You can see all of the sacred herbs in one place, which is really beautiful. So, and then once I um, harvest this, I am not just going to chuck it into my car and go. I'm going to, I like to, I like to have an extra bandana handy and its sole purpose is for collecting and I will place it in the bandana and wrap it up kind of like a, in a wad and then I will place it someplace where it's not going to get abused and crushed and you know things thrown on it. So when you're using uh, 
herbs and plants and things like that that you get out in nature for your ceremony and ritual. Uh, you really want to be mindful. You really want to have an intention and you want to carry that intention all the way through. So from the moment that you are deciding on collecting to the actual collection to leaving that space and storing it and then you know being able to put it to use. Uh, all the energy that has gone into creating it, all the energy that has gone into harvesting it, all the energy that has gone into transporting it, and then to actually using it. Um, when you go to use it, it's going to take all that whole, that whole thread, that whole string of energy that, you, that I just described. And it's going to pull that energy into uh, your ceremony and ritual. So if you're doing this unconsciously and you're just out here just wow I'm gonna take here and here and here and here you're taking that and you're gonna put that into your ceremony and you don't want that you don't want that kind of energy um, associated with whatever it is that you're using it for so that's a little bit about sage um, and also like when I collect this right now when I'm on the road it's really I'll put that that little bandana bundle I'll put it up on my dashboard and the heat from the Sun so you got that fire energy mixed with um, this. It just makes your, my entire car smell really, really, really good. I love it. Um, so this this sage here is wild sage. I don't know the exact um, name for it. It's not the white ceremonial sage that you kind of buy in bundles that has like a thicker leaf. But um, but this sage is in my mind. It's it's almost more uh, powerful and potent than uh, the, the white ceremonial sage that you buy at the store and not because of the plant composition but mostly because when you go through the act of harvesting your own um, uh, sa sacred herbs for ceremony and use for ceremony and ritual there's something about that 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 changes the way that it um, feels and the way that it works and and I think it's because you begin to have that relationship with it and the energy exchange isn't money I'm not going to a store and paying money to buy for that sage I'm actually coming here and I'm the energy exchange is tobacco cornmeal or my or my DNA and it's my intention and it's my thought and it's my feeling it's my energy and all of that is just such a beautiful way to um, bring that all encompassing into your into your space so um, anyway that's a little bit about sage I'm gonna collect now um, I'm not gonna do that on camera because I want my intention to be uh, personal for me and for this to uh, really uh, be a, 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 a big part of my 50th birthday so oh one more thing about that don't over collect you don't want to over harvest something so if I actually am needing like uh, let's say I want like a lot of sage I'm not going to collect it all from one plant I'm going to collect a little bit here a little bit over there 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 and you know you just want to uh, you don't want to harvest too much over harvest on one plant and you also don't want to over harvest what you really don't need so I'm just going to take enough that I need for a couple of ceremonies and um, and then if I need more um, then I might go to the store and buy some, or I'll come back here. All right, when it cools down. <laughs> All right, bye, you guys. I'll see you in the next Shaman Short. Bye. Loved this episode of the Shaman Shorts? Subscribe to Dakota's YouTube channel and be sure to leave a review. It's very much appreciated. Aho!